If the only copies you have for your logo are rasterized formats like .png and .jpg, then you won't be able to reap the benefits of having a vector SVG file, like infinite scaling and being able to edit your logo in the future. In that case, you'll need to generate a vector copy of your logo using vector design software, and that's what I'll be demonstrating in this video. This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating two different ways in which you can take a logo in PNG format and trace a vector SVG copy of it. But before we get started, if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So getting started, as you can see, I have Inkscape opened up here on my screen. And the first thing I want to do is just set up the document so that we are all working with a similar layout. I want to come up here to where it says Enable Snapping and turn that off. And then I want to come up here to where it says View, make sure we have Custom selected. And then come over here to where it says View, go to Zoom, View, Zoom, and Zoom in at one-to-one. -one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import my PNG logo into Inkscape. And the way that I'm going to do that is by opening the folder where it's located and clicking and dragging the file onto the canvas. Now you won't be able to see me doing this because I have the folder opened up on my other monitor, but I am clicking and dragging the file onto the canvas there in Inkscape. And we're gonna get this little menu that pops up. I'm going to choose Embed. I'm going to choose Default Import Resolution. And then I'm going to choose None. I'll click OK. And there you can see that is the Inkscape logo that I will be using for this demonstration. Now let me just zoom in on this just to show you that this is indeed a raster format. This is not a vector design. So let me zoom back out here. What I want to do now is I want to change the size of my page border so that it fits the size of the logo here. So to do that, I'm going to select the logo, as you can see here, and go to File, Document Properties. And I want to expand this menu that says Resize Page to Content. And then down here where it says resize page to drawing or selection, go ahead and click that. And it's going to change the page boundaries to where the logo is. So let me go ahead and close out of that. So like I said at the beginning of the video, there's two different ways where we can go about tracing a vector copy of this design. One is an easier way where it's kind of like an auto trace function using the trace bitmap feature. And if your design is so complicated that that won't work, you'll have to manually trace it. So I'm going to show you both. Let me show you the auto trace feature first. Uh, I want to select the logo. Just make sure you have the logo selected here. You'll notice you have it selected when you see these arrows enabled. And I want to come up here to where it says path. And I want to go to trace bitmap. And under this menu, we have these two different options, single scan and multiple scans. For this design, it's just black and white. So I'm going to leave it as single scan. If your design has colors, you might want to click on multiple scans and then you can choose the number of colors in the scan right there. But this design is just black and white, so I'm going to leave it as single scan. I'm going to leave these defaults just as they are and I'm going to click update. And it's going to show you a preview of what's going to be traced in the preview window here. Now for these default settings, this worked pretty well. That's exactly what I'm looking to do right there. If yours didn't come out as well, you may have to adjust these settings a little bit and play with them a little bit. You may even want to change the, the, the type of uh, trace that you do here. But this worked well for me, so I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to generate a vector copy right on top of that. So let me close out of that menu. I'm going to take this. If I move this out of the way, you can see now this is the vector copy. This is the original. This is the vector. And I'll zoom in on that just to show you that is indeed a vector copy. You can grab the nodes tool and you can edit those nodes individually like you would with any other vector object. So what you can do is now you can color that in. You can do whatever you want with that. One thing you may notice is that the filled in area right here, the filled in area where it was white is now negative space. It's transparency in there. If you're okay with that, then you're good to go. If you'd like to fill that in with the color or fill it in with white as I did here, uh, you can use the bucket fill tool for that. So let me make this black the way it was before. Let me grab the bucket fill tool and I'm going to click on that uh, that empty space right there to fill it in. Now it filled it in with the color black. I'm just going to change this to red to now so I can see the, uh, the difference here. And if you notice, it's sticking out of the edges a little bit. So I'm going to change that by going to path, dynamic offset. And I'm going to take this little node up here and just pull that out so that it bleeds out into the design like that. Now let me finalize that by going to path, object to path, 
Let me go back to the select tool and I want to lower this to the bottom. I'm going to click this button that says lower selection to the bottom and now it's lowered beneath the design there and I can make that white and as you can see that is no longer transparent. That is now filled with white. And down here you could do the same thing because this is negative space as well. So that's the auto trace. That's the automated way of, of tracing a vector copy of your logo. If that doesn't work, because that feature won't always work for more elaborate designs, if your design is, uh, it's, it, maybe it's like not a high enough resolution that that feature can work, you'll have to manually trace a copy of that using the Bezier pen. So let me show you how to do that now. The first thing I want to do over here is open up the uh, fill and stroke menu with this button over here. The keyboard shortcut would be Control Shift F. I want to take the original logo right here and I want to bring the opacity down in half so I can see what I'm doing as I trace over it. And I want to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you could press B on the keyboard. And depending on the type of design you have, this design has a lot of curves and bends and, and, and contours and stuff. For this sort of design, I want to use the B spline setting of the tool. I'm going to click B splines. What this does is it basically forces you to draw curved lines. It's kind of like training wheels for the pen tool. If you've never used the pen tool before, this is a great option to use because it forces you to draw curved lines that will be able that'll make it easier for you to trace this design right here. So let me get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and start tracing around this design right here. And to move the page around, basic functions, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel, I'm moving the mouse, and to zoom in and out, I'm holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. So I'm just going to go around and click points going around the design over here to trace to trace a uh, shape going around the logo. And if at any point you need to create a sharp corner because this tool setting will not allow you to uh, create corners by default. What you can do is just hold shift and then click and then it'll allow you to create a corner as you can see there. But I'll be demonstrating that in a minute when I go over this area right here. So let me undo that. I'm just going to go and trace over this logo really quickly. I'm just going to do a very quick and rudimentary tracing of this because I'm not actually trying to make a copy of this logo. I'm just doing this for a demonstration. Okay, so once you're finished tracing around your object here, you could just click on the original node right there to close the path. And if you zoom out, you can see, let me grab the select tool and move this. You can see we've traced a shape over that shape right there. So let me put that back. What I want to do now is trace this other shape right here. So let me go back to the Bezier pen and let me zoom in. I'm going to start tracing around to this. And this is where I'd like to demonstrate the um, the corner feature. So I'm going to bring this over here like this. And again, right here we have a sharp corner. So I'm going to hold shift and click. And there you go. Now you have a sharp corner. Same thing up here. We have another corner area. Hold shift, click. In fact, for the rest of these points, I'm just going to be holding shift the whole time to create sharp corners like that until we get right there. And now I can let go of shift and get back to tracing around this design like this. Now, like I said before, this B spline setting in this tool it's pretty much like uh, training wheels for the pen tool. There's easier, there's easier ways to do this if you're more advanced with using this software, but this tutorial is not for advanced users. This tutorial is for newcomers to Inkscape who just need to create a vector tracing of a logo that they have in PNG format. So let me go ahead and finish tracing this back to the starting point like that. Looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and trace this part down here as well. Okay, so as you can see, I have finished up. I've went and created these shapes as well, and this shape, and that shape as well. So what I'm going to do now is we have the shape, we have the design drawn, we just have to color it in now. So let me grab this select tool. Let me click on the original logo at the back there, at the bottom, and bring the opacity of that all the way back up. Now I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. If you want to color your design in with the same colors your original design had, what you can do is you could just click on the shape, grab the dropper tool, which is over here, and then grab a selection of that color. Now this is just black and white, so I mean, I could just click the black and white colors down here, but I'm, I'm doing this assuming that your logo that you're trying to trace is in color. So I'm going to show you how to do this as if this were in color. Let me go back to the select tool, click on this shape. I want to make that white as well. If you notice, you can't see the white there because it's a white background. It's, it's blending in against it, but it is indeed filled with white. Let me go back to the dropper, fill that in with white. And I want to get rid of that, those black outlines as well. To get rid of the black outline, just hold shift and click on the red X down here. Now let me go back to the select tool. Let me take this shape. I want to get rid of that uh, black outline as well. I'm going to hold shift, click on the X. And then finally, I'm going to make the larger shape over here. I'm going to make that black. 
hold shift, click on the X, click this shape, do the same thing, just fill it in with its intended colors. You can use the dropper tool like I did previously, or you can just fill it in manually with these colors down here like I'm doing. There's also other ways you can fill. You can choose uh, based on RGB, HSL. If you have like an HTML, like a hex code for your, for your design you'd like to fill it with, you can put it right there, followed by FF. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to convert this to a path. I'm going to select over everything, click and drag over everything, and go to Path, Object to Path. And that's going to change that from B-spline shapes to actual true vector paths. Now we can take the original logo and get rid of that. And as you can see, we finished. We have traced our vector logo. So all we have to do now is save a vector file, a vector copy of it. So to do that, I'll go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as a .svg file or an Inkscape SVG file. Or if you'd like to export it as a PNG, like let's say you want to enlarge it. Let's say the whole point of vectorizing your logo was that you can enlarge it like that and then export a copy of it. What you can do is go to File, Export PNG Image, and then from here, you can choose export as, you can click on that, choose your name and location right there, and then click export to export it. And I think that should do it for this tutorial. So that is how you can go about creating a vector copy of your rasterized PNG logos with Inkscape. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.